In this video, I'm going to show you how to create these recipe cards with React. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm opening up a CodePen project. If you're fairly new to coding, I have a tutorial that shows you how to create this exact design with just HTML and CSS. So I'll link that video in the description below. In this tutorial, I'm going to recreate that design using React. So right now in my HTML, I just have a head tag and a body tag, which are both empty. Then my CSS is completely empty as well. And then for my JavaScript, I just imported React and I also added Babel. So over here, I click this gear icon and then under JavaScript preprocessor, I added Babel. And I also imported React and React DOM into the project. So you can just click into here and write the word React and then import React and React DOM into the project. So that's all the basic setup. So now I'm going to go inside of my HTML and the HTML for this project is really easy. I just need an ID of root for the React app to hold on to. So here with the body, I'm just going to give it an ID of root. And this is all the HTML that we actually need. So next I'm going to jump inside of the JavaScript so we can actually start writing the React code. So initially I'm going to create a component called app and this will contain all the elements for the design. So I'm going to write function app and then I'm going to write return. And with React, you can only return one parent element. So here I'm going to create a div and I'm going to give it a class of wrapper. With React, you can't just write the word class because that has a different meaning in JavaScript. So here you have to write class name. So this is the parent element and this element will hold all the cards. So first, just to make sure that this is working properly, I'm going to include an H1 tag and just contain the text hello. And then we have to actually render this app on the page. So beneath this, I'm going to write react dom dot render. And I want to render that app component. And where do I want it to render? Well, I want it to render where that ID of root is in the HTML. So here I'm writing document dot get element by ID and then writing the word root. So now we actually see that text in the document. So I know that this is working properly. Next, I can start working on the actual card component. So beneath this, I'm going to create another function for that card. So here I'm writing function and then card. And here I'm going to actually start working on the card design. So first I need to write return. And first I'm going to create a div with a class name of card. So this will hold the entire element. Then I'm going to create a div with a class of card body. I'm going to give it an image, an H2 tag with a class of card title. a paragraph tag with a class of card description. And then beneath that, I'm going to add a button and I'm going to give it a class of card button. And I'm also going to add the text of view recipe. So to initially ensure that this is working properly, I'm just going to add some text within this card. So that way we can actually see something in the document. So I'm just adding these values in. And then back up in my app component, I'm going to delete that H1 because we don't need it. And instead I'm going to add the card component. So here I'm just going to write card. So once I do that, the app refreshes and now we can actually see a card on the page. Now, if I were to copy and paste this element multiple times, we're just going to get a repeat of the same content over and over again. And that's because I hard coded these values within this design. I want to change the content for each card. So instead of hard coding these values, I'm going to use props, which will let us pass in values to that card component. So here next to card, I'm going to write props. And for each of the values that I want to be dynamic, I'm actually going to delete it and I'm going to reference the props. So here I'm going to delete the image and I'm going to write props.image. I'm using curly brackets here because curly brackets within JSX just references regular JavaScript. 
So here I added props.image and we're passing in props and now the image is gone. And that's because I didn't pass in this value anywhere up in this higher component. So here I'm going to write IMG to reference that image and I'm going to set this equal to the image that I want to be visible in the project. So here I'm going to add the link. So now we see that image again. So instead of hard coding it in the component, I'm instead referencing where I actually declare the component in the higher element. So I'm going to do the same for the other elements as well. Here I'm going to write props.title and up here I'm going to write title and I'm going to set it equal to that value. And then I'm going to do the same with the description as well. I'm going to leave view recipe because I want that to be consistent across all of these cards. Great, so now all of these values are referenced over here. So now I can duplicate this card multiple times and change the value of it. So that way each card contains different data. So I'm just going to add a few more cards to the project. And these cards contain different texts and images. So now we can see that within the document, we have different content. So this is actually all of the React that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within the CSS. So I like to add SCSS to my projects as a preprocessor, which allows me to be really organized with my CSS code and also declare color variables. So first I'm just going to import the font I'm going to use for the project. And beneath that, I declared all the color variables. I also like to add some basic styling to the project, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero. So I like to add that in as well. Next, I'm going to reference the body and I'm just going to set the font family to the font I wanna use for this project and also set a margin to two REM. Next, I'm going to work on the wrapper. Remember we created this app component and then we gave it a div with a class name of wrapper. So I'm going to reference that in the CSS by writing dot wrapper. And for this, I'm going to set the display set to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So I'll link that video in the description below. And with this, I'm going to set the grid template columns to a repeat with an auto fit of a min max value from 12 REM to 16 REM. So this just makes the card scale really nicely on the page. Now, if this is a new concept to you, I have a specific video that goes over auto fit and auto fill. So I'll link that video in the description below as well. I'm also going to set the gap to two REM and I'm going to justify the content in the center. Next, I'm going to work on each card. So remember in the React code, we gave it a div with a class of card, and then we have card body, we have a title, a description, and a button. I'm actually also going to add a class to the image as well of card image. So next, I'm going to reference each of these classes and apply particular styling to improve the UI. So here I'm going to write card, I'm going to set the overflow to hidden, I'm going to add a box shadow, two pixels in the Y direction, 20 pixels blur, and a light gray. I'm also going to set the border radius. And for the content within the card, I'm going to set the display set to flex with a flex direction of column. I'm going to justify the content by setting it to space between. And I'm going to want the entire card to appear interactive. So I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. And I also want this element to have a slight hover effect. So I'm going to add a transition of the transform property that will take place in 200 milliseconds with an ease in. Next, I'm going to work on each element within the card. So first we have the image element and this image actually doesn't look too bad within this area, but this image is actually very large. That's why it's pushing these cards down really low. So I want to control the size of it a bit more. So underneath this, I'm going to write and image to reference the image class. And I'm going to specify the height to 12 REM. I'm going to set the width to 100% and I'm going to set the object fit to cover. So that way we have control over the size and placement of the image. So now all the images are looking much better. 
Next, I'm going to improve the text. So here I'm going to write and title. And I'm just going to set the padding to one REM. For the description, I'm just going to add some padding as well. Top and bottom to zero, left and right to one REM. Next, I'm going to style the button. So here I'm going to write and button. And for this element, I'm also going to add some padding. I'm going to set the font family to inherit, the font weight to bold, the font size to one REM, a margin of one REM, a border that's two pixels solid and with the primary color. I'm going to set the background color to transparent and the color of the text to the primary color as well. I'm also going to apply a border radius. And I'm also going to apply a transition here for the background and the color that will take place in 200 milliseconds with an ease in. So this is looking much better. The last thing I'm going to do is add the hover effects. So beneath this, I'm going to write and hover. And when the entire card is in the hover state, I'm going to transform the scale of it to 1.02. So the card slightly increases when it's in the hover state. And then I'm also going to add a hover effect for the button as well. So here I'm going to write and hover again. So when that entire card is in the hover state, I'm going to transform the button and I'm going to make the background, the primary color and the color of the text set to white. So now when the entire card is in the hover state, the button changes. So there you go. That's how I created this card design using React. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.